welcome once again to our certified christian counselor training this is module 15 the final module for this training if you have come this far you have done well and i believe that you are well equipped already to begin your successful practice as a certified christian counselor uh, in this module we'll talk about how to build a successful practice we'll discuss marketing and networking strategies strategies for growing referrals and business and financial margin management these are important aspects you know just to make sure we tie all the loose ends as you set out to practice christian counseling when you read exodus chapter 25 verse 40 god was talking to moses he says see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain please don't forget this training is like uh the mountain where patterns have been shown make sure you build your practice according to the pattern that has been shown you in this training and meanwhile make sure you also understand the patterns of a successful uh, practice and build according to that pattern now how can you practice christian counseling the business side of christian counseling so to speak uh you have pastoral ministry where you are already a pastor and now you have been equipped and uh, you are pursuing certification and licensure to function as a counselor a pastoral counselor within the ministry where you pastor another angle is uh, to become a spiritual advisor you can become a spiritual advisor you know to a corporation to a uh, board or you know uh, an organization a group a society so you function as a spiritual advisor a counselor that brings spiritual perspective in guiding them helping them in their decision making in their planning you know and all of that so you can function as a spiritual advisor you can also function as a spiritual advisor to an individual for example presidents of nations chairmen of corporations uh heads of industries you can be their spiritual advisor based on the training and the certification that you have you can also function as a church counselor some churches hire counselors or put counselors on payroll whose sole function is to you know make counseling services available to the church members you can also work with a non-governmental organization or a non-profit organization you know people who are involved in outreaches and all you can uh, your your skill and your training as a certified christian counselor can come handy for such organizations christian organizations actually and then you can also start a private practice as a christian counselor we're going to talk about this uh in more detail later on now uh in everything you do whether you are doing pastoral ministry you are a spiritual advisor a church counselor you're working with an ngo an npo or you're starting a private practice always think purpose not profit always think purpose not profit now what purpose would you serve what purpose would you serve as you know a christian uh, uh, counselor in whatever capacity you function within the church in a non-governmental organization as you know uh, a spiritual advisor to somebody or to an organization to a group you know, your number one function your first purpose is to promote mental health awareness when you build a successful counseling practice within a church setting or within an ngo setting within the christian context generally you promote mental health awareness and reduce the stigma associated with seeking counseling a lot of people especially you know uh, if you are in africa it is a normal thing that people will just approach spiritual leaders or pastors for counseling but in some in some settings there is a stigma it feels like you are not okay you don't have your life all together you know and even in a in the african context for instance you'll find a lot of men find it hard to go and seek counseling because it's not like oh can't you just make decisions yourself can't you just be strong and uh, so you, you when you magnify your function as a christian counselor 
it reduces that stigma because people know that nothing is wrong with seeking counseling you have made it so you have promoted that function you have made it an integral part you know of the church organization or of the christian organization where you function or of the community where you belong and while at that you are bridging the gap between the secular and the spiritual many people seek counseling when they are facing challenges when they are facing crises so when you offer counseling crisis within the christian con context or within the church context you can bridge the gap between the secular and the spiritual you can bring a biblical perspective and refer them you know to professionals when the need arises while you still maintain the relationship with them so that you can supply biblical balance as they go through their process of healing and restoration don't forget if you have not been trained as a psychologist if you have not been trained as a mental health expert don't treat mental health problems stick with christian counseling stick with guidance and counseling and refer when necessary refer when necessary so always think purpose and not profit always always think purpose and not profit but while you think purpose and not profit it doesn't mean that money is totally out of the picture so you need to learn some basic business and financial management skills let's start with uh, determining the legal framework for your practice i said in one of the modules understand what the law says concerning christian counseling where you know you intend to practice in the country and in the state where you intend to practice in many states in the u.s you can practice christian counseling uh, without a state license because of the separation of church and state but in some states where there are strict laws you may need to get a state license which will require a postgraduate degree in psychology however many of those uh, 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 states that uh, insist that you need a state license make exception for christian counselors on the premise that you are not allowed to charge a fee so understand what the law says where you are can you charge a fee can you not charge a fee can you practice without a state license? Can you practice with a seminary license? But in many cases and in many countries of the world, you can practice with a seminary license because of the separation of church and state. So determine the legal framework and set up a legal framework where there is an agreement between you and the people you are counseling. They know this is purely Christian counseling. This is not mental health treatment. You know, set up a legal framework so that you are immune and indemnified from you know lawsuits and all of that all counselors even secular counselors do this to indemnify themselves so please take note of that especially if you are in a country where there is a strong you know legal uh, uh, process now set up an ethical framework to determine you know basic ethical guidelines that you must follow review them from time to time and make sure you are there to them implement effective scheduling it is very important if you are going to practice uh, christian counseling so that you don't have a lot of people waiting to see you and you can only see a few and people just keep wasting their time waiting for you so you need to schedule appointments with people and implement effective scheduling you can do online scheduling people can schedule you know by phone call to you directly or to if you have a pa or a secretary they can schedule with your PA or with your secretary and you can just have them book online if you have a website you can use you know tools like calendly for instance to implement effective scheduling so that schedules will not clash and so that you can manage your time better also implement effective record keeping make notes while you know you are counseling so that when next you see the person you know where to pick up from you may not remember all the details again so you just review your notes review their file open a file for people who come to see you if you intend you know to build a successful practice implement effective record keeping then develop a budget and a financial plan if you are going to be charging if you how much will you charge for how many hours or you know for how many minutes of your time and then develop a budget what are you going to be spending on how much will you spend on them but again remember you need to settle from the word go are you going to be donation driven in your counseling practice 
or will you charge a fee for your counseling services? My counsel is even if you intend to charge a fee, start you know from offering free services, then from there to donation driven, then you can begin to charge a fee. If um, you have not built a reputation, people will hardly give you their money, you know, to sit down. To, so start with people you know, people in your church, people in your neighborhood, your friends, and practice these things that you have learned with them. You know, use some of these techniques and then you begin to get, get results. Do it free of charge. Actually, you see, that is many times the drive of purpose, what you can do for free. And you wouldn't mind. It shows that you are actually passionate about that thing. So prove your passion. Then from there begin to run a donation driven practice. In countries where they don't allow you to charge a fee. What you should do is just stick with donation driven. And I can tell you if you are good with what you do. People will willingly, willingly support what you do. They will, they will give much more than you will even want to charge, you know, for, for your counseling. So build a framework and implement effective uh, 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 strategies and standards. Develop a budget and a financial plan so that you can succeed in your uh, counseling practice. Now, marketing and networking strategies. How... Do you get people who are going to pay you for what you do? How will you get people who need your service? Number one is to define your counseling niche. There are different niches in counseling. You can be a counselor for teenagers. You can you know, focus on youth and young adults. You can focus on parenting. You can focus on relationships. You can focus on marriage. You can focus on grief counseling. So there are different niches. Define your niche. How do you define your niche? What exactly are you passionate about? You can definitely be a general practitioner and all counselors are supposed, you know, to be skilled in handling a wide range of issues, but you must define where you will major in. What is your specialty? Addiction counseling, family counseling, define what your specialty is. Then identify your target audience. Who are the people that need that thing that you want to give or that you want to offer and then begin to build your klt what is klt know like and trust know like and trust so the way it works is you get people to know you you get people to like you you get people to trust you so number one begin to put yourself out there let people know this is who i am i am a counselor a trained certified licensed christian counselor and I am available to help you. Let them know you. Write blogs, feature in guest posts, grant interviews. Whatever. Just get people to know you. What then happens is that the day, you know, they need uh, counsel, they just remember that you exist because they already know you. They already know you. That is the idea behind billboards. I used to say it many times. That I, I, I'm yet to see anybody that bought a particular brand of milk because they saw the billboard in town. Most people don't. If there are people, just very few people. But then what happens is when you see it very often, it registers on your mind. And the day you need, you know, you, you just need to, you, it just comes to your mind. Why not get that one? It's so it's not that you see the billboard and then you decide, oh, I'm going to get that thing. No, it is just that the billboard registers an information on your mind so that the day you need it, that is where your mind will go to. So get people to know you, then get people to like you. When people come to you, offer effective service, you know, show maximum care, maximum professionalism, deliver your best. And then get them to trust you. Don't breach your agreement with them. Don't uh, violate standards and ethics of the profession. Don't violate biblical principles. When people know, like, and trust you, then you begin to get referrals. And then you begin to, you know, build a more robust practice. And then you become a uh, high in demand uh, counselor. After that, uh, another thing you can do to 
market and network is to develop a strong online presence develop a strong online presence you may for instance uh, uh, build a website so that there is a, a, a place people can go to if they want to find out more information about you it can be as simple as a portfolio you know and engage with people on social media start a blog do guest features and so on so develop a strong online pre presence in this 21st century there is a lot going on online there is a lot going on online you can reach more people online than you can reach on ground then next to that is to develop or, or to build networks through collaborations build networks with pastors around who can refer people to you church leaders other professionals in the community build networks people who can refer to you and people you can refer to especially mental health professionals social workers and co you know so that you can also refer and then they can refer some uh, professional mental health uh, providers can refer to you when they realize that this person can benefit from from christian counseling so while they take care of you know the professional side you take care of the spiritual side and then you can work collaboratively so build networks through uh, uh, collaborations it will help you in building a successful practice talking about referrals how do you grow your referrals number one is to provide excellent client care provide deliver your best when people see what is good they will tell others about it remember the story of the of the uh, samaritan woman by the well the woman by the well in samaria nobody sent her she went to broadcast herself come and see so provide excellent care the kind of care that somebody will go and tell other people come and see and you know in your counseling process encourage word of mouth referrals encourage word of mouth referrals don't beg for referrals but encourage it find ways to let your client know that oh you know could talk to others about uh, what you have been benefiting from encourage word of mouth referrals and then engage with the community offer educational workshops offer seminars do outreaches awareness programs engage with the community that way you know you 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 uh, uh, position yourself for referrals and at the end of the day make sure in building your practice you follow biblical principles make sure in building your practice you follow biblical principles building a business on biblical principles will provide a solid foundation for ethical and successful entrepreneurship so i'll talk about 12 uh 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 biblical principles on which to build your business number one is the principle of integrity conduct your business with honesty conduct your business with transparency stick with ethical standards adhere to the truth in all of your dealings don't joke with integrity don't joke with integrity Proverbs chapter 10 verse 9, he that walks uprightly walks surely, he that perverts his ways shall be known. Nothing is hidden under the sun. So if, you know, you are dubious, you are untruthful, one day, you know, it will come out. So practice with integrity. Next, practice with diligence. Practice with diligence. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. So be diligent, work with dedication, work with perseverance, work with excellence, use all the gifts and resources that are available to you responsibly. And then number three is generosity. Demonstrate a spirit of generosity, share resources, give back to the community. Be purpose-oriented, not profit-oriented. Proverbs 11 from verse 24 to 25. The Bible says there is that scatters and uh, there is one that scatters and yet increases 
and there is one that withholds more than is necessary, but it tends to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So be generous. Give back to the society. Don't hold back. Another biblical principle is the principle of excellence. Strive for excellence in all aspects of your business. Use your talents and abilities to the best of your ability. To the best of your ability. Something excellent is something that is so good it is hard to improve upon. It is so good it is hard to improve upon. So work with excellence. Give your very best shot. Proverbs chapter, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3 rather, verse 23. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, do heartily as to the Lord, not unto man. Do heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. So, practice excellence, the principle of excellence. Then still watch it. Still worship in your business. Recognize that all resources, all opportunities, all talents, all gifts, all abilities that you have came from God and primarily belong to God. You are only a steward. So manage them responsibly, manage them wisely, and with a sense of accountability to God. Luke chapter 16 and verse 10. He that is faithful in least in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust in much. So qualify yourself for much more from God. Maintain a sense of accountability. And then another principle to follow is the principle of servant leadership. Adopt is adopt a servant mindset. Prioritize the well-being of others. If you have people working with you, prioritize their well-being. If clients come to you, prioritize their well-being. Manage them with wisdom. Lead them with humility, with compassion. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. The Bible says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So you, 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 are, you are a counselor, you know, because you intend to serve people, not because you want people to serve you. Another is the principle of fairness and justice. Treating everyone with fairness, with equity, with justice, seeking to do what is right and what is just at all times. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 talks about what God wants. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Fairness and justice. You must be fair. You must be just at all times. Trustworthiness is another biblical principle on which you should build your business. Make sure you keep your promises, fulfill your commitments, maintain trust with stakeholders, foster strong relationships, be trustworthy. You don't miss appointments. Don't promise and then you fail. Keep to your words. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. Let your communication be yes, yes, and no, no. For whatever is more than these comes of evil. Be trustworthy. And then be humble. Humility is another biblical principle. Yes, you you help a lot of people. It seems like, oh, you're wise. You are just up there. And But avoid pride and arrogance. Recognize that success is ultimately dependent on God's grace and guidance. So remain humble. No matter how much success you, are, you are accomplish, no matter how many people, you know, depend on you for help, remain humble. Don't allow pride or arrogance to enter into your heart. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Bible says, pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before fall. So stay humble. Remain little in your own eyes. Don't commit the error of Saul. 
Another biblical principle is the sense of purpose. The sense of purpose. Do it as unto God. Do it to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Again, purpose and not profit. Luke chapter 2 verse 49. Jesus said, did you not know that I ought to be about my father's business? When it is the father's business, it means that the father must profit from it. So maintain a sense of purpose. Don't let it be about you, you know, making gain or profit or no. Let it be what profit will God make from this counseling encounter I'm having with this person. Maintain a, maintain a sense of purpose at all times. Another biblical principle is long-term vision. Develop a clear vision and mission for your counseling practice. Set goals that align with God's purposes. Set goals, you know, that will help you have enduring impact. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So long-term vision is very, very pivotal building a successful practice. Finally, uh, you must build your practice on the biblical principle of love and respect. Love and respect. Love for all respect for all regardless of who they are love your neighbor as yourself that is what the bible says so you must demonstrate love and respect for everyone value their dignity foster a positive and inclusive environment for the diverse kinds of people that you will counsel with their different challenges and personalities and preferences and all by building on these principles, you will honor God, impact your community, create a sustainable practice, and bring great glory to the name of the Lord. This brings us to the end of this training. Thank you for following thus far from Module 1 to Module 15. Once again, this is Spirit Brew Theological Seminary. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do so, so that you can enjoy some of our forthcoming trainings also. Uh, remember to drop your comments. Let me know where you are listening from, what you have learned, and how you intend to apply it in your counseling practice. And perhaps you stumbled on this video and you would want to officially enroll for this course. You want to become a certified Christian counselor. You want to obtain licensure to practice Christian counseling. Please send us an email at spiritbrewseminary at gmail.com. We'll gladly, gladly put you through. Thank you very much. God bless you.